I'd like to call to order the meeting of the Northampton Disability Commission. We have three excused absences today. Uh, Leticia Ward, uh, Mary Emma Barge, and Gay Fortin. To welcome the member of the public that is here. <laughs> I don't know if you have any comments. Thank you very much. Happy Spouse. Good day, Happy Care. Do we all have a copy of the minutes from our last meeting? Yeah, I want to. Excuse me, I want to announce that we are being recorded in the video tonight. Um, on the minutes, there, there are two things. Well, I understand we're trying to do this with real brevity. Um, I, I think there are two things. On item six, says, I suggested we apologize to the citizen involved. I think it was a motion and, and, and accepted that there be an apology to that person. And the point was that this was, um, this was recommended as a reasonable modification to policies and procedures and forwarded to the mayor. And we have to take action so that these delays do not continue. These are not simply recommendations by this commission. These are now have to be elevated to formal actions that we're taking. So, so anything briefly. Are we amending the minutes to say something? What yes, this is a amendment. Page six. Uh, I got that. What will the minutes say now? What one of the minutes going to say? The first go. sentence has to stay. That's the agenda item. And so. I mean, basically, it was moved that we apologize what? to. Um, so the new new minutes will say we apologize. We moved and we'll take the motion was accepted. accepted. Put the word okay. Moved in. Okay. How do, how do we capture that? And in, in, in order to, you know, move the process forward, City Councilor suggested a meeting and the coordinator will write a letter. You know, it, it's basically, I always, I always can say things once and then I can never remember. And I can't write that because I don't have a computer anymore. That's why I, I should. Do some, some recommended as a reasonable accommodation. Is that good? Yeah, and basically, it's because it was recommended as a reasonable modification. To ensure that the city acts without further delay. And the two sentences that you have. City Councilor suggested a meeting and the coordinator will write a letter. But this is what we have to follow up on is that you know these excessive delays be ended. Okay, okay. you got to do that. And that was also um, my issue on the next one is that the, the accident, which was the one that, that uh, Emma experienced, we not only, if my recollection is correct, we're just suggesting uh, that you speak with your city councilor, uh, but we also said that this was to the point of our uh, Revising the self-evaluation and transition plan will be to address specifically this incident, but these kinds of incidents that need timely corrective action. 
Yeah, I think we're going to have to go back to the way I used to do the minutes because yeah, I, mean, I used to have six page minutes and have everything in them. And then the mayor's office sent me a letter said, you take the agenda item, you put two, three sentences, boom, you're done. So if we go back, then I can fit everything in and not miss anything, but their life will come down on us. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, it's just, uh, and I understand how to get that balance between well, that's, brevity that's and- That's why we put the video, which isn't there anyway, so um, I have to change that. I just felt that these are important because these are really germane to the to the central action that we're trying to take now as a, as a commission, which is to move this ADA um, planning process systematically. Okay, it's not a problem to go back to that. I just wanted to let you know why, you know. Oh, I understand. Yeah, I understood last time when you. Okay, so I got both of those. Are there any more corrections to the minutes? The one thing I, I'd add would be my appreciation for all the work that you do and add that for a long time. And I'll move to accept the um, minutes as amended. We're second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's a unanimously ruled amendment. Since, uh, since I moved, wasn't there another person here at the meeting last week? Yeah. I mean, Leticia Ward. Yeah. No, I mean a, 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 a non member. A visitor, yes. No. It was a visitor, but that, that's not. We don't list visitors on the list. At least we never have. I mean, I can't well, no, I just, just wondered. I, mean, I, I was looking at the people and I didn't see the name. Good thing I waited to bring that to your attention. Um, and we don't list in the minutes what the visitors bring up? Um, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but I made it, I don't know if you noticed, Emma, but I made it very, um, you don't know if it was him or her, and they put me in that, you know, because. Well, yeah. because, I, because our, other, our other guest brought up something about the cuts to the uh, PDTA. Was that the consultant? No, that was um, one of the one of our guests, one of our visitors. I, I thought we'll have to reconsider that policy. I think if, if people come to visit us, their, their name should be reflected in the minutes uh, in the future. Yeah. Uh, and, and and their conversation should be reflected in the minutes too. I, I think it's a uh, minutes uh, minutes should reflect. Reason. All that goes on, and, and I, 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 would, I would suggest that in the future minutes reflect all, all this to some kind of the Conversation is in the minutes, it's just the name. Well, the name, name, names and conversations. A lot of times you get each one's permission to put in the minutes before well, you do it, so. Then, then, then I think the Secretary should, should take that in at least the water chair. I can um, pass out a, an attendance. Um, you know, and with the with the something saying, you know, um, please sign this, which and this acknowledges your permission to add it to our minutes. So, okay. Sure. Any mm -hmm. more discussion? Yes. Yes. I think that's great. Yes. So, so my motion essentially is that the minutes should reflect everyone who is at this meeting and their. Uh, what, what else am I trying to say, Chris? When they when they make comments on substantive issues, right? Sometimes and, and the, their names and the issues should be reflected in the minutes. Thank you. That's what I meant to say, Chris. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Um, Aye. And, and just as an aside, then this one may have sheet. They're going to sign it and give you permission to put it up on. And that's what you mean on the website and everything else. Well, just let them know when they walk in the door, they're in public record, and they should be. The people walk in the door and come to this meeting, 
they should have a knowledge of the fact that they, this is a public meeting. But they have the right to say they don't want to be on TV, they don't want to be up on the website. Let them know. Yeah, even all the city meetings, first thing they say is if anybody is, does not want to be up on NCTV or any of that, um, and either move over here. Or, um, That's good. We'll see if you have a chair straightens that out. Or we could have a sergeant at arms. <laughs> First agenda on the item is the update on the MOD ADA initiative. I'm going to let Chris talk about that. I do have some things that we can look at. Yeah, we just uh, printed out. They're not. We have a, we have three copies of this that we printed out from the consultants that did the surveying. Do you want me to get? But, but Linda, um, that. These will be in the file if anybody wants to look at them more briefly. And then we have one of these. These are various pictures and some of the issues. Do you want to um, I mean, I, I would do it of Melissa's, but the, there are so many photographs and all that that's why I only brought one one copy because of copies when of this. Michael is available to do that. Uh, yeah. but, Essentially, with our very fast moving process, we had two consultants who, um, who uh, worked within the time constraints that the Office on Disability uh, described with the grant award, and that was to have work completed and invoiced by June 30th. The two consultants were Melissa Marshall, and Melissa focused on uh, more of the policy and procedures and had a wonderful time with uh, at least one full day with Jean and, and a number of those uh, interviews with some of the um, department heads and senior administrators. Uh, she has given us her notes. Those are going to have to be processed. The other consultant, uh, Jacqueline Bergen, uh, did some um, surveying of some of the key facilities that we that we listed, and those included um, um, those included uh, the annex uh, Memorial Hall, the uh, vocational technical high school, the parks and recreation facility. Uh, the parking garage and she has given us the photographic record along with some uh, notes on conditions all of this material has to be digested and some additional material added to it and the additional in particular uh, I think is to look at and get a photographic record on some of the particularly deteriorated areas in the pedestrian environment. And uh, those would include the, uh, uh, the, the uh, area, uh, Emma, that uh, you specifically spoke to at the last meeting. And then for us to record some of the, the other areas either where there's dramatic deterioration because we know the, the general proposition is that the pedestrian environment is in, in pretty serious condition along some of the principal routes in the city for us to record those and to record specifically some of the areas where uh, slopes and cross slopes become so complex that um, even if the, the pavement were in good condition the conditions are still uh, treacherous uh, because of transitions between material slopes and, and cross slope slopes. But there is some work to be done, and that's going to open, I think, what is the more general topic for, for today is how do we proceed from this point since there are two things that we discussed. One was that the uh, commission is matching the MOD grant with some resources to do some additional work, part of which would be specifically to provide some support and relief for you and your function as ADA coordinator, and um, whether that would be 
partially expended or entirely expended for that purpose, or whether there might be some part of it we would want to allocate to um, uh, supplement and integrate this material that's being generated into an overall fairly compact report that would be then taken to the to the mayor, the city council, um, and for the third purpose, which was to specifically convene a meeting of some of the key administrators and department heads to to, to broaden the understanding of where we're going with this effort. Well, Sorry for the run on seconds. Yeah, all I can say is I was with Melissa, and we met with a number of department heads, and they could not have been more cooperative. Well, you know, you know, what was it, Assistant Fire Chief, Chief of Police, uh, Head of Human Resources, and I can't remember who was the other person. Uh, oh, oh, uh, the other person's head of, uh, of uh, what? Uh, she was head of, uh, there you go. And they were all cooperative, well, I'm repeating myself, they're all cooperative and, and anxious to assist us in our mission. And uh, I, I believe if we decided to have another meeting, they would come or send their assistance. We were quite vast in their knowledge of what we were about to do. So it was a wonderful set of meetings. So it's your sense of it, one of those next steps would be to bring some of these folks together? And well, when, when we come up with some concrete proposals, you know, it would be sort of be a waste of time to just talk and go on that. Now, now we need to come up with some concrete proposals. And then I think uh, the meeting would be at all. I, I think uh, that it's a, an interesting, that um, that would be a really good idea also. And because of my frustration, I, I think that, um, I, I think the department heads need uh, some basic education, you know, like, um, is it disability? Is it safety? You know, I mean, they have to sort of prioritize. They have to learn, you know, who actually has the upper hand here, you know, who should be listened to, even though it's against sometimes a city ordinance or something like that. Just, and I, I think it really is just basic education, you know, to talk, to understand the, um, the Disability Act and all that. Um, um, my, my first recollection is maybe who's head of human resources. I mean, it's not, some of the things we were talking about just are not part of the city makeup or direction. Right. But she's willing to change that very quickly. But I'd hate to meet with her again until we have some concrete proposals, is what I'm saying. Yeah, so I think that's the process of digesting to boil this down to add the additional information that we want to collect and then from that to uh, to say, and it has to be an absorbable number of specifics because we could bring people in and absolutely uh, overload them at, at one point in time. And probably get nothing done. Yep. Well, one of the striking things that came out of this for me was the uh, emergency shelters and how no thought had really been given with them to how somebody with a disability would be able to go to a shelter or what they would need. Yeah, I think that was one of the things in, in the emergency management meeting is that that can um, help to emphasize the importance of, of uh, Smith Vocational because it is the uh, shelter site as well as its other public functions. And, and how do you put that off of handicapped folks in some ways? I mean, they're not as equipped as they could be for wheelchair and what they are about. And the, the showers in particular, showers and locker rooms aren't, as well as knowing the general toilet rooms. So, and so those are the pieces that have to be brought together is between the, the program and what the kind of programmatic function is, and then sometimes um, the structural pieces, but also the communications pieces. And so how do we proceed at this point in terms of um, moving ahead to continue doing this energetically, uh, but not having it be 
such a uh, displacement of your um, always full workload? Well, um, I had a, a brief meeting with the mayor and I have um, a follow-up meeting tomorrow, okay? So, um, and I was trying to, uh, you know, really emphasize that um, this isn't necessarily an appropriate um, um, hat to wear as the director of the Northampton Council on Aging because, or senior center, because there is so much intricacy and so much time and energy um, to really create a, a system of support um, for people with disabilities that, you know, a part-time person who, you know, just is, has a more of an administrative role, it's just not appropriate. So he, one of his suggestions, and we talked about this, was to approach a few of our surrounding communities and see if um, we could um, have an ADA coordinator um, represent a, a few people so that this person would be an expert in this field. And I think that's what we're looking for. Um, and Chris, you were saying that you weren't sure that it was legal. The concern would be that the person has to be an employee of the municipality in serving as ADA coordinator. So there are some ways I think potentially that could be structured with uh, several municipalities possibly buying in. My concern would be that that person who you want to have functioning at a high professional level, the question would be, would it be two communities? Let's say, hypothetically, it's two communities are buying in, that that person um, would not be hired on the cheap, that is, that there would be some way of avoiding providing benefits. That, the specific concern I would have would be if you're hiring a person to function in a professional capacity and that would have to be evaluated what the dollars would be, whether there's a potential partner, um, that you know, they, they would have to be a reasonable contribution to the benefits as well as, as the, the salary for a person. But I think it's an idea that's worth considering. I mean, the bottom line is that the mayor understood and he, you know, he respected that, that thought, except he said that there is absolutely no money for an additional person in his budget. So that's why he gave an alternative look on um, that might work, you know. So. I guess part of my concern is as we're thinking through that restructuring over time, we also have to be moving ahead in the meantime. And so while uh, that conversation moves ahead, what do we do um, around the work that's moving forward at this point and also knowing when school comes back in, um, work study through, well, any one of the schools that's within uh, DC uh, reach as possible when that becomes I understand your concern with restructuring and, and getting a longer term resolution, but, yeah. but what would you suggest we do now? Should we be hiring another uh, um, person part time at this point to, to help with this process? Okay. The, we have, a, the, um, we have a, a, a position that is available and it's called um, building monitor and um, I, I, we could hire in that capacity um, but it, it's um, I, and I was discussing that with one of our consultants and the problem is that it's it's really an entry level um, very um, uh, not a really defined position but it's like a catch-all and basically we have a building monitor at night uh, monitoring the building for us that's that's about the, the role um, so my you know uh, but but in, to read the meet, to meet the criteria of you know a benefited position with good you know with a, a, an adequate salary I don't know how we're going to do that and that's that's my dilemma. Uh, for for something like that, you're talking some of these duty administrative stuff, the website. The, the oh well, that, for the first step, 
that's exactly what I need. I need I need one person to do a website, um, the web, to get the website up and going because that that is definitely a, a very easy, hopefully a very easy thing to do, and we could get a building monitor to do that. Um, the question that the consultant said is that whoever does the website really should know um, issues on disability. It shouldn't be just, you know. Well, just to throw it out there, I, can I know that. <laughs> so that's that could be an easy fix. The website, if it's done right, it's it's not ADA compatible. It's not. I mean, it needs a lot of fixing. Mm -hmm. Besides just content. Mm -hmm. right. And I will be presenting that option to the mayor tomorrow. So that, um, but as far as that, I think maybe the first step when we're ready would be to get the city um, directors around the table. You know, I feel that, I mean, you know, I think that's part of our frustration right now of not getting the results because I don't think they know um, how to prioritize and understand the, how important it is to be in compliance. Then there's lots okay. of parts to that too. The city has a, a set thing, like say if it's something that goes to city council, it's set out to transportation and parking. They have a list of each, each community that different things have to go to. We don't even exist on that list. That's been a pet for a long time. But I'm hearing multiple things. We have more information that has to augment what we already had collected over those first week and a half by the consultants. There's more information to be layered in. That information has to be digested, as Gene has described, to figure out what the landscape is of points, at which point we bring in the people for the meeting which is going to present it. And that presentation is going to identify a number of things that need to be moved on. Um, we don't have an effective communication policy and procedures. We don't have a legally sufficient grievance procedure. We don't have public notice. We don't have the website. There are a series of things um, that have to be presented at that meeting. But before we get there, we also have to collect information about street and walkway. And this has to be then organized into a plan. We have to meet the grant responsibilities to the Mass Office on Disability, which included the matching funds. So that's the whole game plan. So how do we proceed in terms of that? And ultimately, we have a city evaluation and transition plan. <laughs> that's right. That's what we're... Okay. It seems like a big process, but my God. You look at the work Melissa's done, she's done a great deal of that already. And uh, so uh, it's, uh, it, it, may, it may, may not be as humongous a process as you just presented, because I was ready to go home by that, but she can't be to death. <laughs> I have to say, it, it sounds bigger even as I say it than, you know, for those of us who've done this a number of times, um, you know, again, we, we have some targets in terms of getting the, the patterns and demonstrating. It's like when we go to the public discussion, we want to make it really clear and have the graphics that show what we're concerned about the deteriorated pedestrian environment. We want to show where slopes are so severe that you need to do more design work than is done in the past to figure out how you make the transition across and into some of the, the places where you're simply dealing with some steep hills in the city. So it's not as much work as it probably sounds like. Yeah. 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 Yeah
but there is more work to be done before we have this set down with the um, with the departments and then this longer term thing of considering the restructuring of the position we at this point we don't know what is the revenue stream that does come in from the parking spaces um, that's a small piece of potential revenue which would be a contribution towards a position and then the mayor is going to say, understandably, I'm concerned about my budget, as the mayor has to be. And our role as advocates would be, hmm, you can't simply say that no dollars are going to be invested. If we're saying that you have significant non-compliance with a civil rights obligation, there is some place in between what we would like to see as advocates and you as the shepherd of a very complex budget would like to avoid spending. So with all due respect to the idea, yes, we explore long-term restructuring, but we have to have some dollars and cents at the beginning to even know what we're potentially talking about. Can we use any of the money in this building, Potentially, what is, is that know? and how? No, that's what we're wondering. No. Well, we, we have over $20,000 right now, but I don't know what the annual income is. And I think that's a, that would be a good point. Like, if, for instance, if we, we actually, if we get $20,000 a year, it would be a very helpful, um, it would be helpful to know that. But I have a feeling it's uh, 20000 over a few years. Of, Unfortunately, it's too because it's on handicap before tag. I just came from Walmart. There were six non-handicap cars. They were not handicap spots. No reason to look at that. Okay, well let's we'll call us the, we'll start collecting that money then. But um, yeah, so so that I think that's an easy thing for me to do is to find out what the annual budget, how much in um, funding we get on a, a month a, a yearly basis, and then you know. Um, there's also, um, when people come to redesign buildings or something, there could be a fee put on, um, you know, to address the, the input from this commission to make sure that it, it is developed according to um, the, that it's in compliance with the ADA regulations. You know, there's, there's ways to think about this. Um, that I would be wary of doing. Okay. Because when any body like this cannot get into the position of certifying you've done it right, yeah. because then somebody else raises an objection, and, and yeah. that is like mm, a certain organization that will be nameless that was named after my brother. Um, it gives out access awards every year, um, and sometimes it's giving awards for people who are maybe doing what they're supposed to be doing anyway or in some circumstances may be doing part of what they're supposed to be doing. <coughs> that is not a position that this commission wants to be in. So this is it. We've got some work to do. Um, we've got interim work, and then we've got longer range work, which is the, the restructuring. Um, I'm most concerned, I'm a kind of an interim guy. What's the next step we're going to take? that moves to collect additional information, prepare these critical points to have this meeting of the multiple um, department heads and others where we're gonna have some specific proposals around policies to be considered for adoption and then some training of municipal folks so they'll know what those They'll know what those policies and procedures are so the next time a deaf person comes forward who has raising a concern about a critical safety issue, we don't have more than a year elapsed without dealing with it. Well, so far, uh, Mrs. Uh, Marshall, Mrs. Marshall has presented her proposal. We're waiting for another proposal, is that right? We're we, waiting. We need to gather a little more info, I believe, but because we, we need to. We, we already have uh, we have that. Is, we have and that. And we're, we're waiting for, um, do we, are we waiting for another proposal by the other consultant? We have that. Yes. Oh, yeah, between the two of the package. Mm -hmm. That package. This package right here. Yes. 
Now, Lord, what we need to do is put these together and make some, make some. I think we need to gather more because we need to really look at the walkways and the, the, the pedestrian paths of travel. Do you know when the city study is supposed to be done? The city study they're doing on the streets and curb cuts and um. all that? Wayne's process is moving forward and he is getting um, the information and that's going to be, I think, finished in August, which is on uh, uh, the, the parks and, and open spaces. And he's doing, as you know, one of the departments of the city, he's, he's collecting quite a bit of useful information there. What he is hoping to have to go along with his update, it's a seven year update of his uh, um, open spaces um, information, parks and open spaces, um, would be at least a, um, a model potential grievance procedure, model effective communications policy, and those we actually have some graphs of that we can put on, on the table. And I think that would be sufficient for his purposes. So that's another bunch of information that is coming in from, from Wayne. I was thinking about this, this study by Alta, where they're actually using a wheelchair with sensors to measure slopes and pavement deterioration and all that sort of thing. What are they doing that sort of thing? No, I, do, I don't, and, and I'm not sure how much information that's going to provide us, and I'm, it's not clear to me what we're getting out of that study. Is it going to indicate, you know, every every corner where there are curb cuts and where there are curb cuts that are missing? And to me, that there's a different consideration, which is that we know areas where the environment is badly deteriorated. That's what we should have done. I had a write up about it. I'll see if I could find it again. But from what I remember, it's concentrating on downtown location. It's not looking at Florence and Leeds right. and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, is our consultant, um, uh, our consultants, will they be a part of our, um, by uh, getting, uh, uh, is this? going to be the end of their responsibility or do they they, have they fulfilled their hours that money's had to be expended by by june 30th okay we have some additional resources yes right we committed to we committed to match that's what we have to decide now do we want to have some additional hours from the consultants do we want to have a mix of um, some consultant time with a part-time interim person. Before we do decide that, could I ask, give me a time frame when, when it needs to come in. Give me a time frame. When do we need to have this stuff together? What, 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 what time? August? That, and you know, I mean, that is flexible. We were talking about taking a considerable amount of time potentially to do this over the coming year. I would like to see, um, I think, this targeting a meeting with the department heads. Um, the reaction you got was interest. So the most important thing is not to let that cool. Sure. You know, I mean, delay, we could generate more information and make it look spiffier, but we would lose momentum, we lose energy. It's the momentum and energy that's most important now. Yeah, because one thing I can say from this was before we were losing a battery study or before you guys ever joined, we had sensitivity training here. And by the way, all the department heads were all really excited. The day of the training, we had one department head, uh, my boss from the IT department. Nobody else could come, they were all too busy, too much going on, they couldn't take the time. That was it. Okay, here's what I'll propose. I understand this difficulty. What the hell we're looking to do? We're going to spend some time, Judy and I, um, and we would invite Emma particularly. will document the, the area that it was difficult for you, and we will capture some other photographs. And if anybody wants to point out some other areas where the pedestrian environment troublesome 
we will go get some photographs of those. We are going to get some information on our um, parking that goes beyond the parking garage because one of the general patterns we have in the city is the, uh, the accessible parking spaces for the most part. Um, many of them do not have access aisles. They're not compliant as parking spaces. We will document that over the, over the next month. We will put on the table a number of model policies and procedures, specifically around grievance procedure, effective communications policy, uh, public notice. Ruth, what I would like to propose, if you are interested, is that we also think about, first of all, having the meeting with the department head, but specifically, thinking about having a meeting and outreaching to deaf and hard of hearing people in the talked, cities. Yeah. After the last meeting, when we talked, I reached out to several of my friends, um, one who is still on the board of public school, um, and they're all interested. And they're all, I'm also putting together from them and from other places, lists of interpreters that are available. This is a little right. bit off on that. Uh, the mayor's office has interpreters all the time, so they know how to get them. They don't. Uh, but they, I've had them. I've been to meeting to it and had them for me, so. I'm uh, getting. Interpreters. Okay. Oh, maybe the new people don't. That's right. There's been a whole turnover since I was here, so that might very well be it. Okay, so the proposed plan of action then is over the next month we will amplify the information. We will um, put some model policies and procedures that respond to uh, concerns raised particularly in, in what Melissa Marshall has submitted. We will then aim at, based on what we're able to generate in this month, some digestion at the next meeting and then we will call for the meeting with the department heads and we will specifically schedule the <laughs> meeting aimed at securing input from people who are deaf and hard of hearing in the city because specifically the incidents before us have indicated the lack of that communication support that they haven't really been able to be part of the dialogue. Do you want me to bring people into the next meeting? Not to the next meeting. I would say let's get our information together for the next meeting. Let's plan the meeting with department heads. And then let's also schedule and plan a meeting specifically with people who are deaf and hard of hearing. But let's schedule that at the next one. That would be my proposed plan of action. I, I, I agree 100%, but I, I would like to say if we can't get department heads, we would emphasize the fact that we would get someone to stand into the department because the department right. heads are already on board but now we can get some other people within the department to stand in we, we could get uh, two or three people within one department to uh, on our side i think that would be a, a useful goal department heads their designees right. senior administrators absolutely. and members of the city council absolutely those of you that got these copies only have every other page of it because the original was two sided. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I can take care of that. I always have that in here. You, you have one of the ones that yeah, but the, yeah. but it was only only every other page was printed for the copies that we just paid. I can scan this here. I I would love to bring a, be able to bring a copy of the that document to the mayor tomorrow. I think, I, would like I think it's fine to share with them, but as just an interim. Yeah. In the, in the oh system. yeah, tell them that we have yeah. more to go. But I just because it's on my agenda right. for him. I, I'd like to show him. Um, By all means, the correct copy. So yeah. The, the stuff we have, share with them, but also that we're moving ahead and collecting it more and digesting it. Can I ask a question regarding that meeting? Should we look toward, um, should we ask um, one of the consultants to do, um, facilitate it? Or you guys are just as good, so, I mean, but we, we 
you know, really... When we, we do department heads, I, I think it would be very useful. Yeah, I think so too, just to bring an outside source who's actually talked to all everyone and, you know, I think that it might be a good thing. And then, you know, really do a very nice dog and pony show, yeah. which will bring, you know, we'll do it in the gray room, we'll, um, you know, use, we'll show, the, um, we'll show the, the slides that were taken, the pictures that were taken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that would be Melissa Marshall because she she has the breadth in, in her work, and we would use um, graphics that, that Jacqueline has produced also. But Melissa would be the person with the So this is this is what one one can say, and this is the other. Okay. Are you going to put those in the binder? Oh, it's a box now. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Yes, please. Thank you. Any more discussion on this? Yeah. I just, from a personal perspective, I want to thank um, Judy and Chris, in the bottom of my heart, for making this happen. Um, you know, I mean, we we literally put this grant together. Well, I like, you know, I am such a cheerleader for this thing. But they, they did the nuts and bolts of this grant and you know, we wouldn't be on step one. We were we've been only on kind of the ground floor for so many years. And so now we're thinking we're gonna have an elevator, you know? Yeah, the there is gonna be the chance and it'll be interesting to find out what the office on disability is otherwise funded and, and what's coming out of that process. Statewide, we have we have no idea. They don't have any idea. <laughs> we know they got us wrapped up around here. Uh, we'll see. Is anybody more in Boston for the uh, 27th anniversary of the ADA? You sent me an email. I did. I did. Love to go you know, it's not a special one. They really do it every every year. Um, it's very frequently also done. You know, somewhere in, in Western Mass. So uh, the, the ones in Boston have been the uh, you know the five and ten year anniversaries. Um, I, I actually just received this email. So you did. Yeah, I was going to say I was sending it to you too. Yeah. So do you want to? Well, we have one more item on the agenda, but which we, but we are running out of time. Um, it's a report on our visit to the county jail, uh, which is not specifically part of this um, MOD ADA initiative, but is another ADA issue. So, um, the bottom line is the, uh, uh, the the sheriff invited Judy and me. Um, that also is related to the work I do with the Division of Capital Asset Management and Maintenance and uh, flat out major violations of, it's not just non-compliance that we're describing, uh, but there are circumstances in which um, because of the lack of accessible facilities, there would be fundamental civil rights violations. The sheriff would like to see them fixed. I think um, we can speak about it at the, at the next meeting and provide some more information on that. Uh, but um, I basically, as we do consult with the Division of Capital Asset Management, we, we put an indication to the person we have connection with that uh, um, the situation is serious, complex, and basically an egregious violation of ADA requirements. Should we put that at the top of our agenda next time or maybe expect a presentation? To, to give us some recommendations? Certainly. I know you met with the sheriff also. No, he's, he's one for me, yes. I, 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 I'm very much not. I, I'll, I'll help him out. So, go. so we should table this until our next meeting? Talk to the agenda for the next meeting. So. All in favor? Aye. 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 So this will be the top of our agenda for next week.
Um, when is the next week, by the way? That is a question. Traditionally, you break in August. Okay, there is usually a break in August, but we missed the first two months of this year. Our bylaws say we have 10 meetings. So, I mean, we can always. I'm well, sure we can make a motion for the bylaws. <laughs> So I would, I would like certainly like to have a, if we don't, didn't have a regular meeting, we would have to constitute as a subcommittee to keep the, the, this whole work on the transition plan. So it has the preference to hold it as a regular meeting or a, as a subcommittee meeting just to move the pot. It will be, uh, it will be uh, August of uh, 15, which is the third yes. Tuesday. Yes. August the 15th, why don't we leave it up to the chair to decide uh, if we have a regular meeting or a... Well, I, I, I think you're correct, we need 10 a year, the way the bylaws are not state, and we... If the members can't make it because they're on vacation or whatever, they're excused. Just make sure that everyone knows about it, that's all. Okay. So that would be, our next meeting would be the 15th. The 15th, the 15th of August. We, we just o'clock. got too much business not to be. That's right. We do have too much business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One hour is a short meeting. It is. Um, when he was talking about this invitation that some of us received to the 20, from the Mass Office and Disability to the 2017 Disability Summit Employment Opportunity, it is Friday, September 15th. Unfortunately, it's from 10 a.m. to 12 because it's uh, at the Massachusetts State House in the Great Hall in Boston. And that's pretty early for those of us that live in Western Massachusetts. Um, there is a, a, a web registration site. It's a sent free event, and there are interpreters and a cart provided. And registration is, is, registration is for general admission seated is limited and first come first serve. So if anyone is interested, and then the, the program is on the back. Gotta have that high speed train link before we <laughs> <laughs> Any more business? That's how you say with early two. Is there a motion to adjourn on the floor? Adjourn. To adjourn. Second. All right. All right. By acclamation. Aye, aye. Our meeting is now adjourned. Okay.